seconds and counting. Hey, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to another video. It's Anish, and I'm joined by Roman and Drew. And today we're going to be previewing the Browns versus Texans game on Sunday. And so far, the Browns, they lost against the Kansas City Chiefs. But I feel like out of all the 0-1 teams, I think they were the most impressive. They were leading Kansas City, I believe, 22-10 to at halftime. But as you know, Chiefs do Chiefs things, and they come back. And us Texas fans know, know that all too well. But, um, yeah, but I think the Browns are really impressive in their loss. Uh, in, in their loss. Um, I know there's no moral victories, but... Um, it wasn't a bad game by them, and uh, I think go this Browns game will be the true litmus test on where the Texans are at. Obviously, a lot of people, like non-Texas fans, are kind of discrediting our win against the Jaguars, saying, like, it's the Jaguars. We all knew you were going to win that, <laughs> but um, I think the true test will definitely be against the Browns. I think they are a pretty solid team. I think they can make it deep into the playoffs this year. Um, I think they're that good. Like ever since Coach Stefanski took over, they've been a very serious team. So I think this will be a true test as to see how we perform. And even if we lose, if we somehow keep it close, like then I, I'd still be happy with our performance. But um, what are y'all's keys to the game? Well, I think first of all, one thing the Browns struggled with a little bit was when Baker Mayfield got under pressure, that was their biggest problem. And you got to get the Browns, obviously, to get away from that run game. So if Lovey Smith can kind of dial up a little pressure, which is something that he's not really known for to do in his Tampa 2 defense, but if he can just get some pressure on Baker Mayfield and then kind of slow down the run game a little bit, I would say offensively the Texans' key 100% needs to be to win the time of possession because the Browns are one of the best rushing teams in the entire NFL. They have um, Nick Chubb and they have Kareem Hunt. Those are... That's a really good duo that they have there. One of the best in the NFL as well. So if you can run the ball better than them, I think that that's the number one formula to beating the Browns. Run the ball better than them, force them to pass the ball, win the time of possession so you can get that offense off the field and so that the running game isn't just keep going and going and going. They're just going to run all over us is what the Browns try to do every single game with Nick Chubb obviously there. And then I'll also look for the Texans to force some more turnovers. That would be a really big deal for me but um if they can't do that i feel like it's gonna be a long game the browns are just gonna keep doing what they do we're gonna get back on track against the texans a team who has been discredited a lot like you said people said that oh it's just the jaguars we're expected to win but i don't think the texans were even really expected to win that game the texans were obviously projected to be the worst team in the nfl but they're more draft pick and people said the jaguars are even going to beat the texans so i think this is a really important game for the texans to just go out play their best, show they can even legitimately compete with a team like the Browns. But I still have the Browns winning 20 to 7. Uh yeah, my keys of the game are to get out to an early, early start. That for us, uh, I would probably say we would want the ball first to go out there and get points on the board before the Browns. We need to control that first quarter. The first quarter for me is gonna be one of the biggest things. If we could at least get a field goal or a touchdown on like an opening drive, that would be a very, very good start for us, considering that the Browns are pretty much going to do the same thing as us. They're going to want to control the clock. They want to get. They're going to want to get all the running backs involved, and probably try to open up that play action game. Uh, with Odell Beckham out for this game, they're probably going to be doing a lot more running. Um, last last week against the Chiefs, I believe they passed for 28 times. Uh, Baker Mayfield was 21 to 28. He had 321 passing yards and one interception. So I mean, he only had seven incompletions last week. And our secondary, I wouldn't say it's anywhere. I wouldn't say it's better than the Chiefs, but I don't think it's too far off. I mean, sure, our corners aren't the best, but our secondary is a whole. If they all play as a team, I don't think we're too far off of the Chiefs. But I would expect Baker to have a decent game. But this is going to be a very, very important game for our linebackers. This is why we signed all those linebackers and during free agency. We're going to need all of them to play out, perform, um, stop the run game, and be involved in the pass game. But, yeah, overall, I feel like we are going to take a loss. But if we can hold that loss to, like, minimum seven points, then I feel really good about this football team. This football team, if they can hold 
probably a top 10 team in the NFL to like a seven point game, I feel like that's going to be a major win for us. I definitely agree with all your points. And when you talk about the secondary, I almost forgot to mention this. Lonnie Johnson, I believe he's um, back at practice. So I think he's ready to go for week two. And again, another um, player who's returning is Anthony Miller. He had a dislocated shoulder the preseason and Danny Amendola was subbing for him in week one. So I believe he's back for week two. So we are getting um, more of our starting players. And I don't know, um, I think Anthony Miller and Danny Amendola will rotate around. Um, but yeah, I think that, um, yeah, so, so there was an update. And as far as the Brown side, um, they had, a, they lost someone. They, um, Anthony Walker's on IR with a hamstring strain. And that's pretty huge for us. Um, so we'll see how that injury comes into play. And um, in the in our post game against the Jaguars, I forgot to mention our O-line, how good our O-line looks. And, and like I said, this is a true test to our O-line is the Browns D-line, you know? going against Miles Garrett, uh, Clowney. And I know Clowney doesn't get the most sacks, but he de- generates a lot of pressure. And Mahomes was really feeling that. I mean, a lot of the times um, on his um, dropbacks, he was like throwing off back foot, just chucking it up in the air, hoping Tyreek Kill catches it. And he even admitted to like that, like doing that in a press con- post-game press conference. So um, the, Brown- uh, the Browns D-line, they bring a lot of pressure. So we got to look out for that. But Titus and Tonsil, that left side is basically like like pretty really solid. It's um, I'll I'll play a clip um, in the video, but I, they were really moving the line, and that's probably one of the reasons why Mark Ingram, um, David Johnson, and Philip Lindsay all got to go going. And so back to what Drew said, like in tr- controlling the run game, controlling time of possession, that's going to be really key. And in terms of uh, Baker. Um, Like Roman said, I think he's been a very improved passer. Um, That last interception, it was like in the crunch time situation, two minutes or so. And he just threw it through a duck, um, like on like when he was like escaping from someone. So we'll see about that. And we'll see how Tyrod responds to the pressure. I know he uh, he was really mobile enough to get like escape from the Jaguars defense. But I felt like also at times he kind of got like too much, too much happy feet in a sense that he was kind of creating problems that weren't already there if he just stayed in the pocket. But he didn't get sacked too many times, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But now it's a bit bigger of a problem now that we we're going against the Browns. And so um, aside from the two guys I mentioned in Miles Garrett and Jadavion Clowney, what other players do you, um, are some other uh, players to watch on the Brown side? The Browns have a fantastic defense. Like I already said before, they have a great secondary. They got guys like um, um, Greg Newsom, a rookie. They got um, like what's that other corner's name? I'm not sure who he is right now, but uh, Miles Garrett, of course, like you said, but really impressive in my opinion. The Browns are one of the best teams in the NFL. I would at this point I would say that they're top three defensively. That run game is just going to be really hard to stop. But they do have a lot of injury concerns in the offensive line. Sitting at right now, J.C. Chair, their center, is questionable. Jarek Willis has not practiced all week. He is questionable. Odell Beckham is out. Uh, Chris Hubbard, another offensive lineman, is out for the game. So it looks like they will be missing a couple of people there. Um, but, yeah, like I said, they got a couple of stars on that defense. Otherwise, this could be a, a, the time of the Texans take advantage of the Browns who seem a little bit unhealthy. Uh, yeah, the Browns, as you were saying, have a very, very good defense. Um, some other notable players, other than Clowney and Miles Garrett, that I believe we should kind of game plan to avoid, in a sense. Um, linebacker Mac Wilson, very, very underrated linebacker. Um, jo- John Johnson, one of their biggest free agency signings from the, what was it, the Los Angeles Rams. A very, very good free safety um, as you were saying, Greg Newsom, the rookie corner. They also got Greedy Williams. Um, he's a, I believe he's like a second or third year player out of LSU. Uh, obviously, they have Denzel Ward. So I don't really see us passing that much. I mean, their secondary on paper, at least, it's very, very good. And our receivers, I mean, our receiving core is, I wouldn't say it's anything over the top. It's probably average at best. Brandon Cooks had a very, very good game last week. I believe he had, I think, like around 140 yards, something like that. But other than Ant- I mean, not Anthony, Miller. other than Brandon Cooks, we really didn't have like another receiver that was like that Tyrod can really trust. 
Um, who was it? Chris Conley? In the preseason, he was one of Tyrod Taylor's favorite targets. But last week, we really didn't see too much of him. And Nico Collins as well. I believe he only had like one reception, seven yards or something like that. But if we could get our running backs involved in the passing game, kind of like what we did last week with David Johnson's uh, red zone touchdown reception. But if we could do it a lot more around midfield, even in our um, even in our own territory, like if we get the running backs involved in the passing game, get some screens going, um, get some wheel routes, something like that to confuse the Browns' defense. The Browns' defense is probably going to be expecting a very heavy, heavy run um, game plan from us. But if we could mix it up, play action, get the running backs involved, as I said, I believe we can make it closer and kind of avoid those Browns' star players and defense. Yeah, and um, some other players to watch. Um, I know they don't have Odo Beckham Jr., but um, they still have Jarvis Landry, who seems to be in peak condition right now. He had five receptions, 71 yards, and he was used in a lot of trick plays. I know the Browns like to use a lot of trick plays to throw uh, the, like opposing teams off. And even then, their tight end um, room is pretty solid as well. David Njoku had three receptions for 76 yards. Austin Hooper, uh, three receptions for 27 yards. So... Um, even though they might not have Odell, their passing attack is still something to not take lightly. Um, but yeah, and um, so on top of that, um, I also forgot to mention that um, we're, we re-signed, we made a video on this, but Jaleel Johnson is coming in for Vincent Taylor and Joe, and we signed Joe Thomas, but I don't think he's going to be starting. I think Cam Gruger hill might take, um, like, might fill in for Kevin Pierre-Louis, so we'll see. How that goes won't well, might be fine, but um, but yeah. So let's go to our score predictions. I believe Drew already said his, but my score predictions. I believe, um, sadly, I think the Browns win this game um, by uh, a smaller margin than you might think. I I have the Browns winning twenty six to twenty. I feel like it's gonna be like a field goal kind of game. Um, but what are y'all score predictions for this game? Yeah, I'm just going to repeat what I said before, but I do think the Browns will win 20-7. to seven. The Texans' offense is just going to struggle to really find anything to do. They're going to try to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And then when it finally doesn't work, Miles Garrett in that secondary is going to disrupt everything. The Texans did impress us a lot against the Jaguars. They scored 37 points. They had like 150 rushing yards. Tyrod Taylor had a fantastic game. Frank Cooks had 132 receiving yards, but this is just a completely different team that we're going up against here. We're going to have to start off fast, like Roman said, if we're going to have any bit of a chance here. But if we don't, it's going to be a long night. Uh, yeah, um, my score prediction, I believe it's going to be 24 to 20. I can see this game honestly going either way. I think it's going to depend on um, who gets the, who gets the early start in the second half and to start the first quarter. Who's gonna be? Who's gonna want the game more in a sense? But yeah, I have the being 24-20. But if I had to say a team, I'll probably have to go with the Browns. They're just too, um, too star heavy. Like they have a bunch of stars compared to our team. I mean, our team we have a bunch of, a bunch of average to, maybe a tier below star players. But we just don't have enough star power or enough manpower to go against the Browns. They're just too, too powerful. Yeah, and um. Yeah, I think um, so far, um, like as far as score predictions go, I think the Texans, I know a lot of teams are un still going to underestimate us. And it's crazy how we used to be worried about trap games, but now I feel like we're the ultimate trap team. I mean, the Texans, everyone's underrating our offseason and the players that we have. So I think we're like the ultimate trap team. So if we do win, I'll be surprised, but I'll be like, Dang, I, I mean, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if it's gonna happen, but it'll be interesting to see. But uh, to end our preview, let's uh, give me your hot take for tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's game. Uh, my hot take is gonna be that the Texans are gonna force some more turnovers on Baker Mayfield and company. I'm hoping that they force two turnovers. Um, I'm not exactly sure who's gonna force those turnovers. But look for guys like Lonnie Johnson to make plays. And his return, he did make some plays in the preseason game. He had that interception return for a touchdown against the Cowboys. And then even Vernon Hargrave will get another interception. But let's just try to force some pressure, make Baker Mayfield get some mistakes, and force some turnovers. Uh, yeah, my hot take is that Mark Ingram, Philip Lindsay, and then David Johnson, they all three combined for 200 total yards 
um, whether it's in the passing game, running game, I believe they can all three combine for maybe around 200 yards, something like that. And um, this is a game where we're going to really need to get our running backs involved. Um, as I was saying earlier, whether it's the pass game, but I think mainly in the running game, since, I mean, the Browns are going to be sending a bunch of heat, a bunch of pressure in passing situations. So I believe we're going to be running the ball. But yeah, I have 200 plus yards for Mark Ingram, uh, Philip Lindsay, and then David Johnson. Awesome, awesome. And my hot take is Nico Collins gets two touchdowns. I know in the Jaguars game, he didn't get any touchdowns, but he caught um, balls that were almost touchdowns, you know? So, like, he was just almost there. So, I don't know if it's, like, first game jitters or something. Um, but I feel like Nico Collins, with obviously all of the – most of the attention is going to be directed to Brandon Cooks and then maybe Anthony Miller um, because he's, like, one of the more – well-known name. So Nico Collins still being a rookie, I feel like the defense won't um, direct as much attention, but I feel like Nico Collins at least gets a touchdown, hopefully, but my hot take is that he gets two. Um, but anyways, that's pretty much it for the video. Let us know your predictions, your thoughts on tomorrow's game. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Thank you all for watching. Peace.